Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. In this episode, I'll explain how I coded Sonic R's transparent object fade routine, even though the Saturn hardware doesn't seem to support it. In fact, if you look at Sega's own launch game, Daytona, you can see the objects just popping into view with no fading at all. So if Sega themselves couldn't do it, how did we? To explain why the fading seems impossible, we should first have a look at how the two competing machines at the time, the PlayStation and the Saturn, drew their polygons. Starting with the PlayStation, its hardware just drew triangles, and it always drew them in the same way, basically just a series of different lengths of horizontal lines. To achieve transparent polygons, the PlayStation would, for example, add 50% of the polygon's colour to whatever was already on the screen. As the polygon was drawn in horizontal lines, this worked easily and well. The Sega Saturn, however, was an extension of the hardware approach Sega had taken for many years, and instead of triangles, Sega took the sprite concept from the Genesis with a twist. So, instead of drawing triangles, the Saturn hardware drew sprites, but could distort them. It worked in the same kind of way, drawing lines to build up a sprite on screen, but fundamentally, these were four-sided shapes. There would always be a line drawn between points 1 and 2 and another between 3 and 4, and this could cause some problems. Let's take the example of drawing a triangle. Once you lowered point 2 down to form a triangle, the separate lines to draw it would be as follows. So it could draw a triangle OK, but some of the pixels were overdrawn each time. This meant it was a little wasteful redrawing the same pixel, but it caused chaos for transparency. Here's the first line drawn this time 50% transparent, and here's the second line. You can see that the second line has drawn over part of the first line, altering its transparency as the layers build up. The finished triangle has many pixels overdrawn, and as such, the transparency has been corrupted. Because of this, you couldn't draw transparent polygons, as they would get corrupted. The only way you could successfully use it is shown here on Sonic Shield. As the shield was just a square sprite drawn over the top of Sonic, the polygon wasn't distorted, so each line would be drawn horizontally like the PlayStation and the transparent effect could be used, but in a very limited case. But Sonic R clearly has transparent objects fading in and out all the time, so how was it done? Well, I was intrigued by a section of the Saturn hardware registers that were referred to as colour calculation ratio for sprites. In short, it allowed you to set a kind of mix ratio for how the finished sprite would be drawn over the background graphics. This didn't affect how sprites draw over each other, just the background, but for a fade this seemed perfect. You could set up to 8 mix ratios, so in theory I could have an 8 step fade for the objects. However, hardware problems struck again. To add brightness and shadows to the scene, each polygon had something called Gourard shading applied to it, which facilitated basic lighting. Unfortunately, the mix ratios only faded the texture of the sprites, and not the shading. So the textures would fade, but any lighting would still affect the background graphics. So close, and yet so far. So how do we solve that problem? Here's a basic example of the polygon data stored on the Saturn. For each corner, or vertex, of the polygon, we store its position, its texture map coordinate, and its Gouraud shading lighting colour. I decided to store three other sets of lighting data that were carefully calculated to fade away the Gouraud shading, leaving a flatly lit polygon, i.e. a sprite with no lighting applied. Here's that data in action. You can see the brown mountain isn't fading at all, but the shadows are being faded out, leaving a flatly textured, unlit mountain. Once all the lighting information was removed, I could then use the hardware registers to set up the correct mix ratios to fade out the unlit polygons. Here are the unlit polygons being faded using the eight mix ratios I'd set up. So I first used four steps to remove the shading, and then eight steps to fade out the flatly lit sprite. The eight calculation ratios here show the percentage of each sprite visible for each step. These two techniques combined became known as 12 layer transparency. So let's have a look at the mountain combining both techniques. You can see the lighting being stripped away first, and then the now flatly lit polygons fading out to nothing. And that's how it was done seemingly impossible fading on the Sega Saturn. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, a like or even subscribing would really mean a lot to me. And that brings us to the end of another Coding Secrets. Goodbye.